Today, I'm going to show you guys how to capture or sniff for packets using Wireshark. Wireshark is a tool that is used to inspect data that is passing through your network interface. It's typically used over Wi-Fi, but you could use it over Ethernet as well. And these network transmissions are made up of small data units called packets. These packets contain the data that makes up your video streams, login credentials when authenticating to a website, and even the green text when you're making a shit post to your favorite image board. So now that you have a basic understanding of what packets are, let's start sniffing them. So like I said at the beginning of the video, we're going to be using Wireshark to do this. You want to make sure that you have that installed. Some distros like Kali Linux are going to come pre-bundled with it. And just go ahead and fire it up as root. And once you're inside of Wireshark, you want to make sure that you have your settings set up correctly. So go to Edit and Preferences, Capture, and make sure that your default interface is the one that you actually want to be capturing over. Uh, this one here is a wireless, it's a uh, USB Wi-Fi card that I just attached to my computer. And you also wanna make sure that you're going to be capturing packets in promiscuous mode. And the reason for this is a lot of the time when you're using Wireshark, especially if you're doing any type of pen testing, is you're going to not just be capturing packets that are going to and fro from your computer, but you wanna be capturing packets from other people that are using the network. And basically what promiscuous mode does is it's going to allow your Wi-Fi interface to capture those packets that aren't necessarily meant for it. So it's going to be able to get packets from other people that are going to the router. So make sure if this is something you need to do that your wireless interface is in promiscuous mode. All right, so now that we've got everything set up, let's go ahead and start capturing some packets. Uh, so you can do that by just clicking this blue shark fin over here to start capturing packets. All right, and then you can also see at the dialog box up here which interface that we're capturing over. So now let's just open up a website in Firefox. And uh, let's just go to any old website. Doesn't really matter where we go to. And you could even go to multiple websites if you wanted to. You don't just have to do this on a one-for-one -one basis. All right, so now you can see that a whole bunch of packets have been captured just in that short amount of time. So I'm going to stop this capture by pressing the red stop button up here. And before we actually start looking at these, I'm going to go over what the different columns mean so that you know what this data all stands for. The first two are pretty obvious. So the number is just the packet number in chronological order. And the time is how much time has gone by in seconds since you actually started doing the capture. The source is the IP address that these packets are coming from. So this becomes quite a bit more relevant when you're trying to capture packets that are coming from other devices on the network. That way you can pretty much identify which one is which. Uh, or if you were to be capturing packets that are going over something like a VPN connection. The destination is of course where the packets are going to, so the IP address that they're being sent. And the protocol is the TCP IP protocol that is being used for the particular packet that was being sent. And you can get a little bit more information about the protocol over here in the info section. Now, when you're capturing packets, you obviously get a whole lot of information here. 
and most of the information is actually not going to be that useful for you, uh, depending on what you're doing, but again, most of the time it's not gonna be that useful. So what we can do now is filter these packets to try and find something that actually matters a little bit more. So we can start with just filtering HTTP. So this is going to find uh, HTTP request and responses, gets, uh, different kinds of things. But generally, this is the type of information that you're going to find whenever you're going to a web page, uh, navigating through it, signing in, things like that. So if we scroll through here, we can see that this is an example of a get. So this is a web page being gotten for us and we can get some more information from it by right-clicking and going to follow TCP stream. And so this gives us a little bit more information. I think this is just the default web page that loads in Firefox. Uh, yeah, so you can see a little bit of relevant info here, like the user agent, for example. So this gives you information about what device is connecting, so you can see the OS that it's running, you can see it's Linux, and you can also see what browser was being used. So you can see that it's Mozilla, and it even gives you the browser version. So you can see it's 80.0. And as long as this information isn't being spoofed, it's going to be accurate. So you can figure out, like pinpoint pretty accurately which device is doing this communication on your network. And if you were a network administrator and trying to figure out if there's an intruder or something like that, this could potentially be used to see if there is a device communicating on your network that isn't supposed to be there. So let's go back to our regular HTTP filter. All right, so there's going to be a few different destinations in here because, of course, I connected to two different websites. In my browser, I connected to YouTube and Google. So when you've got something going on like that where multiple sites have been visited, or even if you've just run uh, different things, like if you ran FTP or SSH, you can add additional filters to this to sort of drill down more and try to look for something really specific. So uh, let's take the destination as well, for example. So we'll take this get here and we can right click on it and apply as filter and then do and selected. And so then you see that this changes up here. So now it's doing HTTP and IP destination, the destination that's specified right here. And then we can also follow the TCP stream of this as well. And we can see that this is the one for google.com. So we can see where we went to connect to. And then of course you have your user agent string at the top here. So we can see that this particular device using this particular browser connected to this particular website. Now, when you're inspecting packets in Wireshark, if the packets are encrypted, uh, like they would be if you're visiting a website that uses HTTPS, then you aren't really going to be able to see the contents of these packets. You'll still be able to see the basic information, like where it's going to, and then the user agent, because that stuff can't really be encrypted in order for it to be transmitted properly. But you wouldn't be able to see the actual data being sent. Like for example, if you were to log in to your Google account, that email address and that password can't be seen because all of that is sent over an encrypted channel. But if you were to go to some website that wasn't encrypted, like, I don't know, maybe a banking site that just uses HTTP, doesn't have any type of TLS or SSL, which would be pretty bad in 2020. I doubt that they would actually have that many customers. But if that existed and you logged into it, and if you were on something like a public Wi-Fi network or if you had someone else sniffing packets on your home Wi-Fi network, then that person would be able to capture your login details just using this simple tool. And obviously, 
take all your money or do whatever they want with whatever login details they got. So that's why you don't want to use a website without HTTPS, especially when you're on a public Wi-Fi or any type of shared network. So this is just the basics of Wireshark. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys want another video on this, maybe one that has more details of packet capturing. Uh, maybe I can find an example of a website that just has HTTP with a login page and we can log into it to show you an example of capturing login details. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe. Bye now.